Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial on natural language processing. We're going to have uh, some cool information today and we're going to cover the foundations of natural language processing so that we can get set up to do more complicated machine learning tasks with language based processing in the future. Um, another thing we're going to do in this tutorial which is really exciting for me, I think I'm going to be an early adopter, is we're going to use the Jupyter Lab. So just a few days ago Jupyter Lab released uh, an extension to their Jupyter Notebooks, which we've been using in all of our previous projects, called Jupyter Lab, which is kind of an improved IDE of Jupyter Notebooks. And so I've got this installed, and it's what I'm going to be using today. Um, I encourage you guys to do it as well. We'll see some of the cool features that it provides. Um, some of the benefits over just standard Jupyter Notebooks, or not necessarily benefits, but differences. So this is kind of the, the next, next step in the Jupyter Notebooks line. So installing it is really easy. You can use Conda or pip install, um, just like most things that we've been installing. Uh, Conda has been going kind of slow for me in the past, past few days. So I'm just going to use the pip install. And I actually already installed this, so this is probably going to tell me that I have no updates needed. But that's OK. We'll run it anyways, just for your guys' benefit. So requirement already satisfied. But um, if you need to do, do those installs, you can do it here. Um, so one thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using the NLTK toolkit. So this is a natural language processing toolkit in, in Python. So we also have to do pip install NLTK. Um, this is something that we haven't used in previous projects. And once again, I already have this installed, so we're good to go there. Um, but make sure that you get this and make sure it installs correctly because otherwise you will not have any of the functions that we're using. All right, so now just like Jupyter Notebooks, opening up the Jupyter Lab is really simple. All we have to do is type in Jupyter Lab, and if Jupyter is in our path, we can just click Enter, and this will start pulling this up. So we'll wait for this for a sec. Um, it takes a little longer depending on the, the number of kernels you have. I've got a couple because I set up a couple different Conda environments. We haven't talked about Conda environments much yet. However, they're a good way to kind of control what packages you have installed. So maybe we'll get into that in a future project. All right, so here comes the Jupyter Lab opening up on the local host. And here we go. I actually have a couple projects in here. Um, the start of our natural language processing. I uh, was building this earlier, but we're going to start a new notebook here. So it comes with this convenient launcher. Um, so this is kind of the difference between just Jupyter Notebooks and uh, the Jupyter Lab here is that you have your directory over here. So whatever directory you have open, uh, you can you can see over here. Since I started this in uh, my my user's brand tutorial folder, that is what's showing over here. So we've got the previous project we did, which was classifying DNA sequences, and then this one, which is natural language processing. We have a launcher, so we can look, we can launch a council. We can also do notebooks, and the benefit of Jupyter Labs is it can display a lot of other things as well, CSV files, text files, and it also has extensions where you could, you could process other data. You've got convenient tabs over here, so you can see which, which kernels are running or which notebooks are running, um, cell tools, commands, that type of thing. So really convenient. And I also like this council feature. If uh, you, you were wanting to do some quick testing, this is just the, the standard IPython council. Um, but we're not going to use that today. We're going to go into a, another deep default notebook. And let's go ahead and rename this. Call it natural language processing. All right, so we're good to go there. All right, so um, like I said, we're going to be using NLTK. So hopefully you already did the pip install NLTK, but just in case, let's go ahead and import this now and make sure this imports correctly. And actually, we can go ahead and do some other imports just to show what we are going to be using. And it did. You see this one here. So NLTK has been installed correctly and is able to able to import. So let's do a print. Um, we'll do 
our standard just to make sure that we are on the same page here. So we have that. And we're also going to do the let's let's print out the NLTK version. There we go. And the last one, the SK learn. All right, let's go ahead and click enter here. So here we go, NLTK 3.2.3, Python 2.7, of course, what we've been using in the past. Um, you, you can kind of see there's some slightly different formatting here than the previous Jupyter Notebooks. You can control all of that um, in this Settings tab, even Jupyter Themes. Some people like to have the dark. I like the light, personally. I think it's a little bit, e little bit easier to look at. But um, whatever you prefer, you can uh, change around up there text formatting that type of thing alright so here we go so we have the NLTK um, imported but we actually don't have everything that we need downloaded so if we type NLTK dot download this is gonna open up a, a sort of download GUI that you shall see momentarily that we can use to kind of install different different packages that we're gonna need so here you see it opened up down here and this is the NLTK downloader. So the green is what you've already installed. So I've already installed some of the popular packages. Um, from the collections, all we, all we really need is the popular here. So go ahead and select popular, and then just select download, and that will go ahead. Um, from the corpora, this is kind of like bodies of text. Um, so I haven't installed all of these yet. Some of them it will do automatically when you install the popular. Shakespeare, it's got a lot of Shakespeare in here. Um, it's got a, it's the State of the Union addresses. We're actually going to be using those, so go ahead and uh, get those installed, as well as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We're going to use that as an example. Um, but you can use any of these that you like. These, like I said, are just big documents of text that we'll, uh, we'll be using in this tutorial. All right, so first, let's go over some basics of vocabulary in natural language processing. So I'm going to paste this in here. So another cool thing, oh, here we go. Let's pull this back off to the side. Another cool thing in Jupyter Notebooks that we haven't really talked about is the ability to switch from markdown to code. So down here, if I switch this to markdown, we're immediately going to have some... Uh, some different text and we'll see how this formats in a second so markdown text is pretty standard across the Python community so it's really nice that you can use these these cells in here and so all it's really gonna do is it's gonna process it as text instead of as a code cell so that's really handy if you're building a notebook that you want to share with other people because you can put in well commented code as you might have seen in some of the source code examples that you have gotten through edu onyx so here we have some, some three basic definitions. The corpus, which is a body of text, singular corpora, is the prologue of this. So you saw that in the NLTK downloader a second ago. A lexicon is going to be like the words and their meanings. So for example, the English dictionary. However, other fields are going to have different lexicons. Um, so, you know, when you say something to a uh, hockey player, like let's say you say icing, and that's going to mean something way different than if you're talking to a cake maker. And that's just what lexicon means, the words in their specific context. So token here is like an entity that is split up based on certain rules. So for example here, if each word is a token, when a sentence is tokenized into words, or uh, you know, a sentence would be a token if you were splitting the sentences apart out of a paragraph. So that's actually what we're going to start with, and it's going to be tokenizing words. So we're going to do that in a sec. Um, in this project, we are actually going to be covering tokenizing, which again is the splitting of the sentences and words from a body of text. We're going to be doing part of speech tagging a little bit later. We'll look at chunking as well as things like stemming. And then this foundation is going to open up the door for machine learning in conjunct with natural language processing. So we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, machine learning in NLP, or natural language processing, and we're going to look at how to tie in the scikit-learn 
um, packages with NLTK. And then ultimately, we're going to work up to training a classifier with a given data set. Um, but ultimately, these are basically just foundational steps. So ultimately, we're going to look up to performing live streaming sentiment analysis. And, and that's going to be pretty, pretty cool. So that's what we're building up to. That's going to take us a couple projects. But for now, let's just get started with tokenizing these words. So let's go. We'll have from NLTK dot tokenize import sent tokenize as well as word tokenize. So in our definition above, we saw that we could split into sentences or words. These are going to do both of that, both of those for us. So let's get some example text. Say hello, students. How are you doing today? Um, I've been watching the Olympics. The Olympics are inspiring and Python is awesome. You look great today. All right, here is our sentence. Just some example text. And let's go ahead and print out the sentence tokenize, tokenize of this text. Go ahead and click Shift Enter. So as you can see, this is split this into different sentences. We have three tokens here. Hello students, how are you doing today? And then we have the next one, the Olympics are inspiring and Python is awesome, as well as you look great today, of course. So let's go ahead and uh, compare that perhaps to the word tokenize of this same text. And if we click shift enter here, you see that it's splitting it up into the individual words. Hello students, how are you doing today? As well as you also see that you get the uh, punctuations here. So we have a question mark as its individual token comma, period, that type of thing. So the word tokenizer will split things up based on the words. Sentence tokenizer, split them into sentence. So this is going to be essentially one of the first pre-processing steps that we are always going to do when we're doing natural language processing. All right, moving on. So um, when we're using natural language processing, our goal is to perform some analysis or processing so that a computer can respond to the text appropriately. So the process of converting data to something a computer can understand is referred to as pre-processing, which I just mentioned. Um, one of the major forms of pre-processing is going to be filtering out useless data. So in natural language processing, useless words or data are referred to as stop words. So let's look at removing stop words from NLTK. So we'll add a comment here, removing stop words, which is useless data. So from nltk.corpus, let's go ahead and import the stop words. And so if if we ever import something and it and it tells you that you don't have it installed, you can always go back to this nltk.download and pull up that same GUI and install the packages or the corpus that you need. All right. So let's print this out. Print set stop words dot words and we'll do this for the English language all right oh so no module named NLTK corpus probably because I typed NTLK that's not gonna work there we go much better all right so here we see um, all of the stop words in the English well, maybe not all of the stop words in the English language, but some words that NLTK has identified as not being that helpful to understanding the entire sentence. So let's look at um, how we could use these stop words to kind of filter out a sentence. Um, some of these, just intuitively, you might not think that the word all or perhaps you know before is useless. However, we'll actually see that um, from a computer's perspective, they they kind of are so let's get some example so example here um, let's just say this is some sample text showing off the stop words filtration all right so here's our example then we're gonna do stop words we got to define these again stop words equals set stop words dot words English is the ones we want here. All right, there's that. 
Let's do the word token, so we're going to have to tokenize these words. And since we want the individual words, we'll use the word tokenizer. And we'll do this to our example sentence. Then we'll get down to filtered sentence is going to equal um, w. So we're going to do a for loop, an inline for loop here. So w or word for w in word tokens. So it's going to loop loop through our uh, word tokens here. If not w in stop words. So it's going to compare it to the list of stop words, and if it's not in the stop words list or the set, um, it's going to add it to this filtered sentence here. So another way, or let's just define this uh, in a, a slightly different way. We're going to show that we could do the same thing with a for loop here. If w not in stop words filtered sentence dot append w all right so this is just uh, two different ways that we can that we can do this so this would actually do the same thing let's go ahead and print the word tokens print the filtered sentence as well and let's actually split this up. Let's do, um, let's just call this sentence. And so we can actually show that they do the same thing. I just wanted to add an example of an inline for loop here so that we can see those because this is actually probably better Python programming than using a for loop like this. Um, but at the same time, this is more understandable. It's more readable. So that has its benefits as well. So here we go. Um, so this is is some sample text showing off the stop words filtration. That's our sentence above, tokenized. Those are word tokens. And we've done these two different filtering steps which produce the same results. This sample text, comma, showing stop words filtration, period. So we've removed is. Is is actually the only stop word in this um, and, and the showing off the. So we've removed a couple words here. And uh, we've produced sentences that are both much simpler and uh, don't have this kind of useless data in them. So the benefits of shortening sentences like this is that it's going to substantially speed up our lookup if we're trying to go back and find a similar text. Um, so computationally, it's better to use these filtered sentences. So kind of filtering out these stop words, a uh, very common and important first step in pre-processing for natural, natural language processing. All right, now we're going to move on to looking at stemming words with NLTK. So we'll do stemming words with NLTK. All right, stemming uh, is going to be an attempt to normalize sentences, and it is another preprocessing step that we can perform. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the English language, different variations of words and sentences often have the same meaning. So stemming is a way to account for these variations. Furthermore, it will help us just like um, the the filtering, the stop word filtering above. It's going to help us shorten the sentences and shorten our lookup. So, for example, we could consider two sentences, and uh, the first being "I was taking a ride on my horse." The second being "I was riding my horse." Those both mean the same thing. So, if we're able to shorten those down into a a similar stem, that is going to be very beneficial for us. So those sentences mean the same thing. Um, they have the same tense. However, um, that isn't intuitively understood by the computer. So to account for all the variations of words in the English language, we're going to use the Porter Stemmer. And this has actually been around for, for a long time. Uh, I believe 1979. But we can import this from the NLTK.stem. Import Porter Stemmer. So it's nicely implemented in NLTK. And it's, like like most things, really easy to use. We just have to initiate the Porter Stemmer here. Let's get some example words. So we'll do a list here. Let's do ride. So we're talking about horses, riding, rider, rides. 
All right, so here's our example words, and then we can simply do for w in example words. Sorry, let me scroll down here. We'll print off ps.stem w, where this ps is our porter stemmer. All right, so click enter here, and I keep typing ntlk. That's okay. All right, here we go. So. You see here we've split some of these. Writer, it actually doesn't change and because it actually has a slightly different meaning. But writing, rides, and ride are all just condensed down to the word ride. So this is really useful. Um, we've taken the stem out of these words and kind of removed the conjugations or the tensing. And uh, so this is going to be quicker and easier for us to work with. So now let's take a look at stemming an entire sentence. Because it's going to produce some kind of um, odd results for us. So it's a good idea to look at those. When riders are riding their horses, they often think of how cowboys rode horses. All right, here we go. Oh, I've got an extra, extra punctuation there. So first things first, word tokenizer. So there's that. And then, just like above, we'll do 4w in words. Print ps.stem w. Shift enter. Here we go. Um, so you notice, first things first, it returns all lowercase. So that's helpful. Removes the capitalization. And then, like writers, is just stem writer. Some of these don't get changed at all. Riding gets changed to ride. Horses, you actually lose both the E and the S. Still have our comma. Um, cowboy loses an S. Horses again. Road doesn't get changed um, to ride. That's still past tense. So here we go. Stemming of an entire sentence. Um, we've kind of condensed these down. So now that we have these stems, we were able to tokenize them. Um, produce these stems, we can move on to part of speech tagging. Um, so now we can move on to part of speech tagging. Part of speech tagging means labeling words as nouns, verbs, adjectives, or whatever. So even better, NLTK can handle tenses. While we're at it, we're also going to be importing a new sentence tokenizer called the punct sentence tokenizer. So this tokenizer is actually really impressive. It's capable of unsupervised learning. So what that means is that it can be trained on any body of text in order to kind of fit its tokenizing into the, that uh, specific, specific body of text. So for this example, let's use the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We'll just show that here. So we'll import the UDHR, and then we'll print out the UDHR.raw English Latin 1. So this is the text. And remember, um, if you didn't install this earlier, oh, one too high. Here we go. Let's move this down. What you can do is the NLTK.download, parentheses, click Enter on that, bring this up under Corpora or our text packages here, you can come down here and get this UDHR right here, which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All right, so if we do shift, shift enter on this, we actually see you know this this awesome document. You know, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's printed out for us, so this is. This is kind of how these uh, documents are going to be loaded into Python. Um, so I'm just using this Universal Declaration of Human Rights as an example. Um, we're actually going to be looking at some other sample training text for this punk sentence tokenizer um, because it is has two similar examples. We have in the corpus We have the State of the Union addresses, and this is actually really nice because we have both the 2005 and 2006 State of the Union addresses. 
So since they were both given by George Bush, um, there are singu similar language in each. So we're able to train the uh, sentence tokenizer on his first speech and then use it on the second speech. And it'll actually be much better than a generic tokenizer since we did train it on um, some of George Bush's previous speeches. So here's the punk T sentence tokenizer. And then, so we'll have our train text. And this is going to be the state union dot raw 2005 George Bush, George W. Bush dot text. And then, so sample text, what we're actually going to be using this train tokenizer to process. is his 2006 George W. Bush dot text. All right, so there we go. We have those. We'll click Shift Enter. You see very quickly it's able to get these in. If we print these out, just as an example, you see we got the whole speech here, just like we have above um, with the Universal Declaration of Human, Human Rights. This is a little bit longer. It's his entire State of the Union. Um, but that's all right. Um, one thing you can do in these is if you right click on these cells, you can clear the outputs. That's pretty nice if you have a really long output and you don't want it to show. So I'm just going to do that. Um, we we're just looking at that example there. All right, but now that we have some text, we can train the punct sentenizer, sentence tokenizer. All right, so really simple. We'll have our custom sent tokenizer. This is going to be a class instance. And all we have to do is provide it with some training text, which we defined as above. This is the 2005 State of the Union address. And so this will have this will build our custom sentence tokenizer. So there's that. Um, go ahead and click Shift Enter. So that's all trained up. Come down here. We can uh, now use this to tokenize the sample text. So we'll use our custom tokenizer dot tokenize the sample text. All right, there's that. All right, so let's go ahead and click Shift Enter here. And that ran as well, so we're good to go there. So we have our tokenized sentence. Let's maybe print that out as an example, just so we can see what it produced. So we have all of these split into the indiv individual sentences. They are in a list. Um, some of these are longer than others, um, separated by commas. So all the different sentences in this in this speech in list form. So that's really helpful. But now let's define a function that will tag each tokenized word with a part of speech. So this is the part of speech labeling. So we're going to just define this here. We'll define it as process content. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try for i in tokenized now let's just do this for the first first five. First, so first five sentences, because remember our tokenized is a sentence tokenizer right now. We'll have words equals NLTK dot word tokenizer. So we're splitting each of our sentences into individual words. And then we'll have tagged. And so we can do the part of speech tagging with an NLT, NLTK function, um, just position, tag, words. So as easy as that. And let's go ahead and actually print this out as well. So we'll print tagged. So we had a try up above. So let's, if that doesn't work, if it gives us an exception, 
we'll just print the string e. All right. So, um, but this is just a function. We need to call this function, and we do that just using these parentheses here. All right. So let's go ahead and run this cell and see what it produces for us. All right. And here we go. So here we have all of these um, words in each sentence tagged with a part of speech. NNP here is a noun. Um, we also have a lot of uh, other words here. We have JJ, IN, DT, determinant. Um, so, so maybe if we just do part of POS tagging NLTK, we can get some of these um, these words here. Mm. So maybe here we go. This could be a good one. So let's try this. That way we can learn some of these what these part of speech tags mean. Because you know, like it's pretty obvious that the NNP is a noun. This is producing a list of tuples. Um, the word with its part of speech tag, but some of these are are less obvious. You know, how does NNP differ from NN, um, RB? So let's go ahead and and run this. Oh, and I actually don't have it downloaded. That's okay. So it's it's suggesting that I run the NLTK downloader, which is a, probably a good call. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll do nltk.download. Ah. I always type in NT NTL. Not sure why. All right, so here's this. So if we actually look back here, we we find the tag sets back here in the all packages. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So it's installing, finished installing, perfect. We've got our tag sets. Let's go back and try to run this again and uh, see if we can get better results. Ah, perfect. So here we go. So this is telling us all the possible labels. We have dollar, um, some punctuations. We have conjunctions, numeral, determiner, existential there, a foreign word, um, adjectives, lots of different adjectives, noun, a common noun, a proper noun, um, a plural proper noun. So these are telling us all of the possible different tags um, that we could see in this part of speech tagging when we run this function above. So, but here we go. This is actually really sweet. All of these are labeled with their part of speech. This would have come in really convenient in elementary school, um, but that's all right. We'll use it now. Okay, so now that we've done part of speech tagging, we can move on to chunking with NLTK. So, um, chunking is simply grouping the words into meaningful clusters. The main goal of chunking is to group words into noun phrases, um, which would be like a noun with any associated verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So the part of speech, speech tags that were generated in the previous step will be combined with regular expressions. So if you're not familiar with regular expressions in Python, I'll bring in some common ones for you here. So like a plus is going to be a match one or more, match zero or one repetitions, asterisks, um, match any or more repetitions. So these, these are going to get used so that we can do chunking or grouping these into, into these sample text clusters. So let's, I'm actually going to go back here and I am going to copy these because we're going to use these again so I'm just going to kind of consolidate all of this into one cell let me let me get another one below this Oh, pull this down alright so we're going to have our training and sample text we're going to have our custom tokenizer which we trained Let's get that, control C, bring this down. All right, let's actually tokenize the words. Come back up here, 
Oh, we're in stamming. Went too far. Let's take this. Bring it all down. Ah. So just consolidating here so that we can see all of this conveniently in one code cell. And then the last one, let's get our process function. Here we go. Let's take this, control C, bring this down. All right, so now we want to do the chunking. So we're going to have to change some of this a little bit. And we're going to use these regular expressions in this process content. All right, so we have 4i and tokenized. And let's actually eliminate this, just 5. Let's do this for all of them. We're going to do the word tokenize again. We're going to do the part of speech tagging. We won't print this out this time, though. So let's combine the part of speech tag with a regular expression. So this is actually what's going to produce our chunks. So we'll call this a chunk -gram, And we're going to define it. We're going to use these uh, triple quotations here. We'll have chunk. And we use these uh, curly brackets. So there's a lot of uh, kind of notation here. But that's OK. And I'm just going to type this, this out. And then we can talk about what each part means in a second. So just follow along. Question mark, get an asterisk, NNP plus NN, question mark, and curly bracket, and triple quotations. All right, so let me actually, uh, let me add a content or add a code cell here. And I'll actually define what some of these mean. So that line broken down is going to be these. So we have RB dot question mark is going to be zero or more of any tense of adverb, because the RB here is going to be an adverb, followed by um, zero or more of any tense verbs. And then one or more proper nouns followed by zero or one singular noun. So this is the chunk that we're going to be looking at. Um, this is that noun phrase with the noun and any of its associated verbs. So we're going to pull these out from all of our um, tokenized sentences. But we're not quite done. We're going to use a chunk parser. So we can have chunk parser is equal to the NLTK. And this is regxp parser. And then we'll do chunk gram. And finally, chunked equals chunk parser dot parse the tagged um, words that we have above. All right. And we can actually draw these chunks. This is a cool feature of NLTK. So we'll do chunked dot draw and just parentheses there. All right, we've got our process content here still. So we should should be good to go here and have all of the uh, all of the chunking that we need. So let's do a shift enter and see how this works. And here is actually the NLTK.draw. So this is separating um, the words into individual chunks. So here, for example, we have President George Bush. So this is a noun phrase. Um, some of these aren't as informative. And this is actually just the first sentence. So this is going to print out all of these for each sentence. Oh, yep, here we go. Um, it's it's going to keep going. So maybe I should have said only do the first couple of sentences here. But anyways, this is a cool way to look at the chunks. Um, maybe not the most useful way to use the chunks. So we'll actually look about a, look at a little later how we could access this these chunks because um, they are stored as an NLTK tree. Um, if we keep closing this, this will keep going through all of the sentences in the State of the Union. So maybe we we don't want to do that. It also shows relationships in these chunks, which is kind of cool where they're all connected. This S is just being sentence. 
So this only has one noun phrase in this sentence. So instead of going through all of those, <laughs> the applause, <laughs> that's all there is in that. Um, I'm going to do this interrupt kernel. Just click stop up here. So this is going to stop it. It says I did a keyboard interrupt. Um, maybe let's just do, instead of all of those, we'll just do the first, first two or three. If we run this again, we can go through it pretty quickly. So it has all these. Um, it's thinking. I clicked. We got some applause. All right, so that's done. We did our first three sentences. Let's go ahead and take this, and let's actually look at how we would access those um, as a uh, as an NLTK tree, because this draw function, although it's really cool to look at and it's it's nice to see because it helps you kind of understand what's going on. Um, we can't really use that as well. So what I'm going to do is down here, um, before we draw these, I'm going to add in a function. I'm just going to print the or print the uh, the NLTK tree. And so to do that, I'm going to say a for loop here, for subtree in chunked.subtrees and I'm actually going to use a lambda function here. Lambda functions are a convenient part of Python. You might see them come up from time to time. Instead of defining a whole definition function, we can just do this quick um, one-time use inline function that we're defining. So label equals chunk. So this is saying um, for the subtree, if the label is chunked, or not chunked, sorry, if it's just chunk, we're going to do the following. And that is just a simple print subtree. So we're going to print out all the subtrees here um, that are actual chunks. So let's go ahead and, and take this back. And I'm actually going to up this a little bit. Let's do the first 10 sentences. Yeah, we'll go a little higher. Let's do the first 20 sentences. All right, so shift enter here. We'll see how this does. All right, and here we go. So here are all the chunks or the noun phrases out of the first 20 sentences. So some of these are just one words. Um, some of them have a couple of nouns, you know, President George Bush instead of just President George and Bush being individual words. And, and let's actually up this farther, see if we get some more. So yeah. President George Bush is a common chunk here, White House photo, Eric Draper. So a lot of stuff in here, but we are kind of able to separate out these noun phrases. You know, we don't want supreme being labeled as an adjective here because supreme is actually a proper noun. It's the supreme court. So it's good that we've got those together as well as we're separating the individual names into um, their actual um, first and last names. So that's very useful. Another good part of pre-processing in NLTK. But now we're actually going to move on to chinking with NLTK. So this is very similar to chunking. So um, sometimes there are words in the chunks that we don't want. So we can remove them using this process called chinking. And so this is pretty easy. Let's uh, take this same same function we defined above. I'm going to take this down. Um, I just control C to copy and then control V, paste these in. So now we want to remove words from these phrases that we don't want. So I'm going to change this chunk gram here a little bit. So we still have our quotations. And then we have our chunk, which is again the uh, curly brackets. So we'll take this. But and here is actually the the chinking part. What we can do is we can define words that we don't want in this phrase by using these inside out brackets or these kind of backwards brackets. So we want to remove verbs. We'll take those out. And then we can use these uh, um, vertical bars to delineate 
um, other word types that we don't want in there. So we don't want determiners. All right, so we'll take all these out, get a plus there, and then this last bracket, we only need one. And we actually need a, a third. There we go. So um, this is saying take this chunk, um, but take all these words out of it. So take out all of these uh, these um, verbs, preposition, determiners, or the word to actually is is here. So here, let me let me actually pull in this comment from my other notebook that will help explain this a little bit. So the main difference is the bracket, and we're just removing the chink, one or more verbs, prepositions, determiners, or the word to. So that's all we're doing in this in this phrase here. So let's go ahead and do that again. Um, and and actually print out these, which is good. Maybe let's uh, let's print the chunk so we can see how it kind of edited it. I'm going to go down to 20 here. All right. So here's our chunk. You know, President George Bush um, address before blah blah blah. And then it prints out um, kind of the chunks, chunks here without, out any of the editing. Actually, I'm going to go back. This is kind of hard to look at when we print these out. I'm going to add this comma in here and click Shift Enter again. All right, so here's these chunks now, and, and this makes a little bit more sense. We have a lot of information in there, but if you notice, none of them are going to have verbs, prepositions, determiners, or the word to. So again, just really helpful if you're trying to remove um, different words from the chunks that you are collecting or the clusters that you are building from these tagged words. So there's that. It's a, another aspect of chunking. And then finally, this is actually going to be the last thing that we're going to do in this first video of this project. This is named entity recognition with NLTK. So this is a really common form of chunking um, in the process. It's called named entity recognition. So NLTK is able to identify people, places, things, locations, locations, monetary figures, and more. So there are two major options with NLTK's named entity recognition. We can either recognize all named entities, or we can recognize or we can recognize named entities as their respective type, like people, place, location, etc. So, and it's going to be just controlled with one simple option. So, let me go back up ahead. We'll get our function here again. I'm going to just take this guy. We don't have to retokenize the words each time, I suppose, since we've already done that. So, I'm going to take out the chunked grams. So, let's take this out. So, right after the tagging, we're going to do our named entity recognition so we can have named entity equals NLTK dot NE underscore chunk tagged and then so here's the option we have binary equals true or binary equals false um, that is all we really need to do so let's I'm gonna get rid of this lambda function here and simply do a a named entity dot draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. So here it pulls up a uh, a list. So you notice here that we have simply this NE, so it knows it's a named entity, so George, address, Congress, um, Union, but if we actually go back, and I'm going to have to stop this here, I believe. Otherwise, we're going to go through 20 sentences. Or here is another good one, Mr. Speaker. So let's stop this. Keyboard interrupt. Let's change this binary to false. Go ahead and run this again, and we'll look at the difference. Oh, we've got an extra. Hmm, not sure what happened. There we go. All right, so when we have binary equals false, we're not looking for any named entity. We are, are going to actually try to label those as person, places, or locations. 
So here we have person, George Bush, and you notice it separated it into, instead of just George as one named entity, now we have a person with its first and last name, George Bush. Organization address, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, Congress, organization, good call. Um, State of the Union, it's also calling an organization, that's all right, it's not perfect. So this is this is a cool way to kind of pick out these different parts of these different chunks um, identifying people, identifying organizations. Um, this will also do locations, stuff like that. So that's named entity recognition. NLTK makes this really, really convenient. You know, perhaps you, know, you could use this in a situation where you had, you know, an email and you wanted to quickly um, save information such as location, date, time, of a meeting that was scheduled in that email. This named entity recognition through NLTK could do something like that. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm gonna clear this output here. We have named entity recognition. And let's just do a, a quick pass over what we've gone through so far. So this is using NLTK, which is this convenient package in Python for natural language processing. We looked at tokenizing words, um, both sentence tokenizing and word tokenizing. So splitting into sentences from a body of text or a corpus, or splitting into words. We looked at um, removing stop words, which is filtering useless data from these tokens. Um, and we did that in a couple of different ways. We also looked at training a uh, or the, the stemming with NLTK, so removing tenses and uh, normalizing the words. So stemming is a great way to normalize kind of the tokens that you produce, specifically word tokens. Um, we, we looked at um, pulling in different texts from NLTK, example text. Um, we also looked at using the punk sentence tokenizer, which is a trainable sentence tokenizer, which we then used um, in these functions here to actually um, do, do part of speech tagging. So in, in this example, we were able to identify the part of speech of each individual word, um, the tokenized words. So we have all these different examples um, that they could be labeled as you know, nouns, adjectives, verbs, pronouns, preposition, adverbs, particles, etc. We looked at chunking and using those with regular expressions that come up in Python from time to time. So this is how you perform chunking. I'm um, using the chunk ram and the chunk parser from NLTK. We also looked at how you might remove some of the words that you didn't want if you... and I'm not sure why these are all highlighted here. There we go. Um, we looked at using chinking to remove some of the words from a chunk that we wouldn't necessarily want. So that is a slightly more complicated form of chunking. And then we looked at named entity recognition um, using NLTK's built-in named entity recognizer. Um, so we looked at labeling different chunks or words in, in different chunks as, as people, places, locations, or things. Hello everybody and welcome to the final video in this project on natural language processing in Python. We've covered the basics and so now we can actually do text classification uh, where we will deploy a machine learning algorithm, a support vector machine to be specific, to classify movie reviews as either positive or negative. So we're going to have a data set of a bunch of different documents um, where those documents are movie reviews and we want to have the computer learn whether or not it is a positive review or a negative review um, just based off the words that are contained therein. So we'll look at um, how we are going to take tokenized words and then use them as features that we can feed into our machine learning algorithm. We're also going to look at how to wrap the scikit-learn package with NLTK and use classifiers from scikit-learn um, in Python through NLTK. So let's go ahead and get started. Previously, we've covered tokenizing, stemming, part of speech tagging, chunking and chinking, and then named entity recognition. So we're gonna use some of these basics, these, this foundation that we've built to do this text classification. Um, but for now, let's, let's go ahead and just import a couple libraries that we need. I'm gonna import NLTK again, um, just 
So for readability's sake. And then from the NLTK corpus, we're gonna import the movie reviews. Oh, and we need an underscore there. So movie reviews. So that's the, the set of documents that we're gonna be using. And remember, if you don't have the movie reviews installed already, you can go nltk.download. And this is gonna pull up an NLTK GUI um, that you'll be able to download those, those from. So this is thinking a little bit. It's still processing here as noted by this asterisk. Um, hopefully these will import correctly. There we go. We see the one, so it worked. And we're going to be using the random to set a random seed so that we can improve our reproducibility a little bit. And again, I'll just run this really quick so that you can see um, if you were following around in the following along in the other project videos as I, as I hope you were, then you already understand how the NLTK downloader works. But if not, here you go. You can go to the corpora, all the different documents, and in here you can find the movie reviews um, right here, actually, and get that get that downloaded and installed. It should be relatively quick. It's just a zip file. All right, so now that we have that, let's compile a list of our documents. So we're going to build a list of, of documents. So to do that, um, we are going to use the movie reviews that we just imported. We want them as a list. So we have movie reviews dot words, file ID, category. So we're going to use an inline function here because these are a, a bunch of different reviews. So what we can do is we can do a for category in movie reviews dot categories. So these two categories are actually going to be positive and negative here. They're split into those different categories. And then for file ID in movie reviews dot file IDs for each category. So there we go. This is going to build that list of documents, both positive and negative reviews. Um, and once we have this imported, we can go ahead and explore this a little bit. But let's keep building this. We want to shuffle the documents. That way we don't have all of the positive reviews and negative reviews in order that could skew our, our results. So let's use the random.shuffle documents. Okay, there's that. Let's actually start printing out a few things so we can uh, learn more about this data set that we're building. So let's go ahead and print out the total number of documents. I'm just going to use a length documents, so it's going to tell me how long that list is. Let's also print out um, the first review so we can see what these look like. Dot format, documents. All right, here we go. We'll do the first one here. Okay, that should be good. All right, and now what we want to do is we want to build a list of all the words contained in because we want to use these words as features. So we need um, an, an entire list of all the words not just split into these different documents. So we're going to do that in a very similar way as we did the documents. We're going to use a uh, for loop. So for w in movie reviews dot words, parentheses here, we're going to do all words dot append w, which is our word here, and then we'll do a lower to make sure it's a lowercase. All right, that's awesome. This is a list of all the words. And then we'll take that list, all words, and we can do a convenient NLTK frequency distribution of all those words. So this is going to sort them by uh, um, most common to least common. And it's doing that using this frequency distribution function built into the NLTK library. So awesome. Let's take a look at some of those. So we'll print out most common words. Let's get these. All words dot most common. Let's uh, take 15 here. That's good. And then let's print. How about uh, the word happy? And we're going to print out how many times happy comes up. So we'll format all words and we can use the key index here 
of happy. So this is going to tell us how many times happy comes up in all words. All right. So if we have everything correct, we can go ahead and run this. Shift enter. And so this is going to build a list of the documents, shuffle them, and then generate this combined list of all the all the words in these movie reviews. So this is going to take a little bit because there are, well, I'll just tell you, there's 2,000 documents in this data set, so it's got to run through each and every one of those. And it also needs to append a list of all the words. It's got to sort them, and it's also doing these print functions as well. So here we go, though. It, it actually didn't take that long. I've spelled documents right wrong up here. That's, that's going to bug me a little bit. That's okay. So number of documents, 2,000. Here's the first review. Um, it shows that America remains ambivalent over the nature of its political system. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> um, but these are all tokenized into words. And it's got the entire review here. So most common words we have most common is actually punctuation. And then we get into the the. We have another period, a. So that makes sense, you know, commas and periods and the words a, v, and and obviously going to come up a lot of the time. So here these are, and actually the word happy shows up 215 times in these reviews. So that's a good thing. Um, it's good to be happy. So there you have it. So this is the data set that we're going to be using. Let's take a look at... Um, converting these words over to features. So let's uh, just, out of curiosity's sake, let's print the length of all words. Let's see how many we have here. So we have 39,000 words, 768. So a lot of input, um, but we don't need all of these. We uh, aren't gonna use, you know, 300, 39,000 different features to train our machine learning algorithm on. So what we're actually going to do is use only some of the most common ones. So let's um, use the 4,000 most common words as features. So word features equal list all words dot keys and let's go ahead and take the first 4,000 of these. So this um, is uh, an interesting way to build features. This, these may not be the most informative features, so we could have ways to improve this um, in the future. But for now, when we're just looking at a basic introduction to text classification, we're not going to bother with uh, processing our, uh, our data set too extensively yet. So we're gonna we'll take these features and we'll we'll assume that they are a good way to go. All right, so there's that. Let's run Shift Enter on this. That runs pretty quick. So now we have our word features. We have four thousand features, and then let's build a find features function that will determine which of the four thousand word features are contained in a review. So here we go. For each document, we want this function to be able to sort through it and determine which of the features are in the review. So we'll do a find features, and it's going to take an input of document, which is going to be a review in this case. So words, let's take set, document. And the documents already have the words tokenized, so we don't have to do that. So here are our words. Let's build a features, and we're going to start a dictionary. We're using brackets here, so this is going to be a blank dictionary. You know, in Python, you have a list. Um, the the brackets, the curly brackets, are going to give you a dictionary. All right, and now we can loop through these. So we'll do four w in word features features w equals W in words. So if that word is contained in the list of words in our document, um, we're, we're going to start building this, this dictionary of it, where the uh, key is going to be a W, or the word, and the uh, value is going to be um, a true or false type scenario. 
All right, let's return these features. And then let's use an example. So let's use an example from a negative review. So this is what the features is going to look like. Features, we can just call this function now, find features, and we'll do movie reviews. So we want to pass it just one document, dot words. So I already know the file name. This is coming from the negative category. And then CV000 underscore 29416 dot text. So this is just one of the reviews. And then let's uh, actually print these out. So for key value in features dot items, if value equals true, print the key. Oh, we need a colon here. Print the key. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. And that was really quick. We've already got the output here. So in this review, we have the following features. We see that we get like the periods because of course the period was one of the most common words. But we also have a lot of other descriptive words in here. Perhaps problem could give away that it's a negative review. Um, horror, perhaps confusing. This could be a, a dead giveaway that this should be a negative review. But here are our features. Um, this entire list of features is uh, a, tr a binary true or false for each feature as to whether or not the word is contained in that document. So this is what we're going to be feeding into our machine learning algorithm or our support vector machine in this case. But again, this is just just for the one particular particular document. So maybe we could actually um, print these out. Let's just print the features dictionary that we just generated so we can see what that looks like. So this is going to take a little bit longer. But you see, so for the majority of these words, and uh, this isn't in order from most common to least, uh, dictionary does not store order in Python. So these are randomly shuffled. You have for each word a true or false as to whether or not it's contained. So since we have 4,000 words here and only uh, maybe 20 or so were found in the document, most of these are false. But again, there are going to be a couple trues mixed in. So let's go ahead and clear this output. We know what that looks like. Let's go ahead and do this for all the documents. For all the documents. You know, we had our one example text. Now let's build all of our inputs. So feature sets, we'll call these feature sets. And we're going to do another, another inline for loop. So we'll have find features of review for comma category for review category in documents. So for both the positive and negative reviews, we're going to find the features for each review in our documents, which was the list of all the documents that we generated um, up above here, right here. So we, we built that list of documents. And now we're going to get, build this feature set off of them. All right, so let's go ahead and run this, make sure it works correctly. So this is going to be a pretty big um, variable here, this feature sets, and it did run. So we see that number there. So now let's, uh, we're going to start importing sklearn, and we're going to use the model selection um, to import the train test split function, which we've used in the past to build a training and testing data set. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can split the feature sets into training and testing data sets using sklearn. So we are going to, from sklearn, import the model selection, which again, we've used in the past. Let's uh, define a seed for reproducibility. So we'll say seed equals one and actually perhaps when we shuffled the documents up here before we should have set our seed before that but that's okay um, we'll just do it now all right so seed equals one and now let's actually split the data into training and testing data sets 
So training testing equals model selection dot train test oh train test split feature sets and let's define test size test size 0 0.25 since we have a lot of data we can have a big validation data set and then random state equals seed so there we go um if you've noticed um, you might be kind of confused by this because in the past when we've used this train test split function we've actually had four outputs we've had the x training the y training and then the x testing and the y testing and this is actually going to be because of the way that we have to pass these uh, training and testing data sets through um, the NLTK to the sklearn we don't need to pull off the class or the positive or negative tag from these training and testing data sets yet. And so since we don't have an X and a Y here, we only have feature sets, this is just gonna split this into training and testing. So we'll look a little bit later about why that's different. So let's go ahead and run this, and it it's already done. So just for fun, let's print the training length and then print the length testing. If everything went well, we should get uh, 1,500 in the training. Oh, we have... Uh, I have a spelling error here. There we go. So 1,500 in the training, um, 500 in the testing. This makes sense. We had a test size of 25%. So this is good. We have 500 documents, 500 reviews to test our algorithm on, and we have 1,500 to train it on. So now let's look at how we how we use sklearn algorithms in NLTK. So we're going to need to import a couple things. So from nltk.classify.scikit-learn, let's import the sklearn classifier. And then from sklearn.svm, let's import that support vector classifier, which we've come to know and love in previous projects. Let's go ahead and run this so everything works. Um, we already have these installed. That's good. All right, so now we have to start an instance of our sklearn classifier. So model is going to equal the sklearn classifier. And inside of this, we are going to use our standard um, sklearn class, which is the SVC. And let's define a kernel here. I'm going to use a linear kernel. We could test out some others if we wanted, but um, linear is a good place to start. So we have to, each time we use these uh, scikit-learn classifiers with NLTK, we have to wrap it in this sklearn classifier class. Um, so we have to use this first, and then this is what we are going to be passing our information to later, our training and testing data sets. So shift enter, that ran, good, we're good to go, let's move on. So we can train the model on the training data, Step number one, so our model, our SVC wrapped in the sklearn classifier, we can just do simple dot train, training, pass it all of the training data. No need to separate the class here. And we'll shift enter, and this will think for a little bit. We're fitting that support vector classifier to this data, Trying to, trying to find that optimal separating hyperplane, which is going to divide these different documents into either positive reviews or negative reviews. And there we go. So let's go ahead. This is, this is all run, but remember, information from our training doesn't necessarily um, tell us that much. So let's go ahead and test on the testing data set. So let's see how well we are able to generalize to documents that we haven't seen before. So let's do accuracy equals NLTK dot classify dot accuracy. We'll pass it the model, which is fully trained, and then we'll pass it the testing data set. And let's go ahead and print that out. So we'll print the SVC accuracy We'll use the dot format to substitute in a variable into our string here, accuracy, and parentheses. All right, so let's see, see how we did. 
So going through the testing data set, we are thinking, thinking, testing, classifying documents, still thinking, and here we go. So 63% accuracy, certainly not the most accurate classifier that we have seen in any of our projects to date, but that's okay because we are just getting started. There are tons of different ways that we can improve this result. But for now, we're just trying to build that foundation for natural language processing. So we don't have to go into those details too much yet, but we will in a future project. So that's okay. So we, we can learn how to improve these results later. That's fine. In this project, we built a foundation for natural language processing in Python. We covered tokenizing, stemming, part of speech tagging, chunking, named entity recognition. And then finally, we just did text classification. So some of those ways that we'll look at improving this result in future projects will be at combining multiple classif classification algorithms. Um, so we don't have to use just a support vector machine. We can combine this with perhaps a naive Bayes classifier or other classifiers um, to produce better results. Furthermore, we'll move on to more difficult challenges, such as sentiment analysis. You know, um, is the overall um, review positive or negative is a pretty easy sentiment to classify, and we'll look at um, some more difficult scenarios in the future. But thanks for following along. You have built your foundation. This is actually the end of the project. Um, we covered all the basics, um, the tokenizing. We learned a little bit about some vocabulary in natural language processing, and we built all the way up into doing a simple text classification of either a positive or negative movie review based off a feature set that we built from all of these documents. So again, I'm using the most common words as features. These aren't going to be the most descriptive since all the documents have probably a comma and a period. And so we'll look at a, a better way to build features later. But for now, um, the big takeaway here is probably how to import this sklearn classifier and use it to deploy sklearn algorithms through this NLTK package. All right, thanks very much for listening. I hope you learned a lot from this project.